Well, first of all, I got to thank you guys for coming over here tonight. Yeah, we got to work tomorrow morning. I do. These, <laughs> these guys probably don't got to work. Me too. Well, I don't, I don't really have to. It's, it's going to be raining tomorrow, so I'll be good. So I won't have to mow lawns. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thanks for coming over here tonight. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty good podcast. Uh, hunting season's right around the corner. And uh, I think it's it's always good to kind of go over, you know, the elephant in the room so to speak, um, neighbors, right? Yeah. So, uh, what I did today is I brought in some neighbors here and, uh, I'm going to kind of let them introduce themselves, who they are and kind of what they do. And, uh, we'll kind of go from there. Josh, you've been on here before. So why don't you start it up? Just yep. to remind everybody who you are. Yeah, I'm Josh. I'm Joe's cousin. <clears throat> um, yeah, like I said, I've been on here a couple times now, work in the ammunition industry, do a lot of hunting and, uh, yeah, I did these are my buddies. <laughs> so who do we have over here? Uh, I'm my name's Cameron. Uh, I'm a actually a nurse. I work all over the United States and travel around, so I'm not home all that often. But um, we kind of came to be friends with Josh and over the years, and ended up becoming kind of neighbors. So um, kind of that's my story. Yeah, cool. I can elaborate on the the friend part. Yeah, and I'm Brandon. I'm Cam's brother. Older brother. Older brother. I don't know if people can see, but they don't look related at all. Not <laughs> yeah, even a little yeah. bit. <laughs> you know how many times we've been asked if we're twins lately. But, uh, but yeah. Um, I really lost my train of thought of where I was going with it. <laughs> so uh, what, do you, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work in the, uh, healthcare. Do work in cardiac rehab. Um, been doing that for quite a while. So it's kind of a house learning doctors over there is what you're saying. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of healthcare. Why you pull that mic just a little closer to your mouth there? There we go. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. So what uh obviously you guys had some type of influence to go into healthcare. What was it? Mine was more some family history stuff. Um, and then shadowing in it in college. I really enjoyed it. And then that, you know, working with patients, talking with people, just like, you know, kind of this podcast where we're going with building that relationship with your neighbors. You know, you get to meet different people, different stories, that sort of thing. So, really enjoyed that over the years. That's cool. Uh, I think Cam's just in it for the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I actually was going to be a teacher um, originally. Oof. I was, uh, <laughs> I loved, I mentored some kids in high school and loved doing that. And then I ended up having a, ran into a human biology class in high school and loved the human body. So, I ended up helping people in a different way. Yeah, that's so, cool. But, my favorite class uh, along those lines was anatomy because it was just memorization. <laughs> what yeah. is this? What is this? What is this? I'm like, I can do that. And I'll see you start connecting dots. That's where I have a tough time. <laughs> I like Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, for some reason. Uh, cool. That's, that's cool to get a little background. And, um, you know, I, I've only known you guys for a little bit. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I don't really know you guys just seen you around a few times. Uh, around the the meat pole uh <laughs> the, the, where the big bucks are hanging hanging from the uh the rafters but uh yeah it's it's cool that you guys do what you do and, and help people out like i've told people before i'm in education too and i don't know if there's a, a better feeling you know going throughout life when you get to help somebody else out and, and you guys in healthcare that's that's pretty cool what you guys do especially from what we've seen you know in the last four years or so for you guys to to stay in that line of work that's pretty cool um I always ask my guests on the podcast here, what are your, what are you, I'm catching this whiff of the skunk. All I know, comes I, out know of I know, I know, keep looking out, it's such a gorgeous night, we haven't fresh. smelt it all night, no, it's like, where is it coming? It took me about 40 minutes to get everything set up here, these guys waited patiently, yeah, and, time. and uh, the sun started to go down, and, is that it, right over there, right in front of that bag? Beautiful, no. uh, that a that's a dog, there was, there was a that rooster a... over there too, yep. the dog probably just found it. They're just sitting here, and as soon as we started the podcast, there's a skunk. You can smell a skunk, but That's all right. we'll try to stay focused here. But uh, I always ask my guests, uh, Josh, he's already answered his in a previous podcast, but um, maybe each one of you guys go over one of your first, maybe like childhood memories in the outdoors or hunting. Um, just kind of give, give paint a little picture of what that is for you guys. I guess I got one that kind of painted a picture of me in my first hunt that I remember physically with both my brother and my dad, you know, one of them old cattle pastures that's got a big old gnarly bur oak with a million branches up in it. And you could throw about two, three tree hooks and you could probably climb all the way to the top. 
and sitting out there with my dad and we just both straddle a branch my dad stand on one and you know of course some does come out and we're silhouetted as all can be and you know my dad's like don't move and i got a branch between my legs both my legs are going numb you know <laughs> the man parts are not feeling so nice <laughs> and i don't know i just remember that remember that being fun seeing how deer react and can pick you out just like anything that's not supposed to be there yep so like yeah six cents one of those things where dad didn't care what we were you know it was about being in that moment you know so sharing that with your boys that honestly was the same story that i was gonna say <laughs> for so for some reason that sticks obviously resonates in my head of a moment with dad but i guess the other part would be like growing up um you know when we weren't quite old enough to hunt yet but dad would come in and be like i got one you know or you know you guys ready to go track and sharing that moment where you get to go out and you know follow that blood trail to to find that animal or whatever it was that he got you know that that big thing and then you know seeing that excitement and i got to see that reciprocated when my dad got one this year and my son came out and did the kind of blood trailing thing so seeing that again now in that next generation is was just as exciting for me almost like i was you know got the deer or whatever it was so you bring up a good point um and and that's why i like going back and and digging deep into the memory bank um you think about what we had to go through as hunters um maybe you guys i don't know how old you guys are but myself i had to wait till i was 12 to go out hunting same thing with you josh 12 yep. are you guys 12 too mm -hmm. yep. yeah we're all the same so we're all similar age. okay so <clears throat> so now um you've taken your boy out to hunt already mm -hmm. you got a turkey this year right you know and how old how old's how old's your boy maybe six in a week so he's five right now so that's that's the one thing and i've listened to other people's perspectives on this but like they're creating our, our state is creating a lot of opportunities just like other states they are creating a lot of opportunities for young hunters to get out there in a effort to gain more hunters which i mean we need hunters don't get me wrong but do you think that by creating more of these opportunities by letting hunters you know start earlier with age uh, allowing hunters to use crossbows, um, just creating a lot of opportunities for hunters. Do you think that's helping or hurting, or don't you really care? You know, as, as far as that goes. I guess I can jump in. I mean, sure. I think I think it's somewhat situational, right? Um, you know, like yeah, by taking my boy out, and it, and it kind of depends on the type of you know the mentality of the individual taking their youth out, or you know are they abusing it or are they, is it just one for one swap? Right. So like, you know, I took, took case out and my whole, my whole season was dedicated to case and my wife, right. Me shooting a bird was not on the radar because it was, so it was just about case. So there's my one for one, right. Instead of me killing my bird, it was about my son getting his bird instead. Right. And if I had opportunity, sweet, you know, I'll go for it. Um, it's, it's like the way I kind of seeing some of this is how much is it ex exploiting like the management side? versus actually like benefiting the individual like like making a, a, a good opportunity for somebody that maybe wasn't going to hunt that's now going to hunt or is it just making it a little bit easier for the guy that was already doing it right and like it, it, like not to get into like the deer hunting side of it but like right. the whole crossbow debate well in my eyes like you give me a rifle or a crossbow and i'm something's gonna die it's going down right like i'm yep. gonna kill us something Right. The, the whole part of like the archery season is the primitiveness of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where, you know, my, my kind of my thoughts of like, are you exploiting something like to make it easier for somebody like for actually the better, or is it going to impact it for negatively, mm -hmm. negatively, if that makes, if that makes sense to you guys. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What's your guys thoughts? I would say my biggest thought is the, you know, for kids and stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. Yep. You know, it's Agreed. any, I'm going to be just excited mm -hmm. as any kid that, you know, you see those videos online, a kid shot his first buck or a doe, mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. I still remember me shaking my boots the first time I shot my first doe. I'm like, mm -hmm. that just gets my blood going. Yeah. I don't care. You know, it's the same thing when it comes to a big buck. You know, my buddy shot a big one. I'm like, yeah, let's, let's see. go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever gets your blood going. <laughs> yep. I mean, if a young boy wants to shoot that big six pointer that walked out, a little yeah. six, go you for know, it. If he's shaking his boots. Yep. 
Yep, I agree. That's awesome. I want to see that in yeah. more people. And, you know, with Hunter numbers, you know, it's hard to say they're on the decline, which they are, but right. to keep this community going and the foundation we have that has been precedent by, yeah. you know, all of our dads and forefathers, you know, I think it's important that we keep that instilled. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the, what I always tell people, right? So my son, he's five when he shot his first turkey. Like, that's young. Like, and I understand that. And I, my, my kind of my mentality with going into hunting with him and even even athletics with him is like, I, I, I always tell people, like, I'm going to feed the beast if the beast is there. Mm-hmm. Right? right? Like, if my, right. if my, son, is, my son is showing passion mm-hmm. for hunting and he wants to go, he's coming in the truck and we're going hunting. Mm-hmm. Right? If he wants to go fishing, the same thing. If it's baseball, if it's right. you know basketball, if it's going to be football, like I'm going to feed the beast. Like, like I mean, there, there's not we're gonna get into parenting strategy, but it's right. like you know, at some point you have to put, you have to push and you know guide a little bit. But like if, I mean, I feel like I can have a good, pretty good pulse on if he's ample or and wants to do it. Yep. Then we're going to do it, right? But then the other side of it, as a parent, like I'm looking at it, like okay, is he proficient? Because I want him to have a good experience. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, so we practice a lot with the 410. Yep. And like, when, when, when he comes with me and I'm the one hunting, like, I've taken a bow hunting in a ground blind. Like, now I'm doing it strategically. And I know we're probably just going to see a lot of does and I'm not taking him into the timber or yep. any of like the, the good, the really, really good spots. But it's like, you know, I'm trying to educate and learn and teach as we go. And if he's, when he's right. burnt out and tired, you know, kind of my, what I call it is like, okay five more minutes and one more snack and then i see how many times i can get away with that <laughs> to keep him focused right and here and yep. then once once i can tell he's shot then we're done like yep. like i know it right yeah so again it kind of from what i call it is feeding the beast as much as i can but then pushing it just a little further to just push him a little bit because mm-hmm. it, i think you want tough kids you right. want kids yep. to, to you know have a little bit of resilience per se and mm-hmm. so if you just give in as soon as they say i'm tired or i want to go home well not you're not teaching that now you're caving into the other side so it's a fine line and it's a double-edged sword I, you know, right but you know it, it, along the lines of like the kids hunting like i do think it falls on the parents a little bit to make sure that they get that good experience like i was talking about early like right the last thing i wanted you know case to do was to miss one or to, to not get recover it right yep. and it's the same thing when he goes for deer you know i don't know if maybe he's going to be archery only maybe he just wants to gun hunt but at, damn sure either way like, I want to make sure his proficiency is there. And, you know, I mean, it, it happens. You're going to miss a deer. You're going to do this, right? But I'm going to try to get it as well as I can up to that that moment, that first moment, to make sure he's, you know, proficient yep. at his craft as, as well as he can be. Brandon, what are your thoughts? Um, I, you know, I'm all for that stuff, you know, with the crossbows and whatnot. And, again, it's kind of your look on it of what are you, you know, are you looking at, looking at it because it's easier perhaps or – you know, is it something that is going to get you, okay, now that I can do that, maybe I wasn't going to go before, but now I'll actually, mm-hmm. I'll give this a try and get, you know, you're going to get out in the outdoors. Um, and the same thing with the, you know, the kids and the ages and stuff like that. And, you know, if it, it's, I've always been, if it gets your heart pumping and stuff like that, it's, there's, there's no, there's nothing wrong. I'm not, I'm not a score person or mm-hmm. you got to shoot the big deer to be the hero kind of thing or whatever, you know, it's, that's, uh. Yeah, it's if it gets your heart ticking, makes you happy. That's that's what I want to see out of play. Yeah. I, I want to see that excitement. If you're excited about it, I'm excited that you, that you did that. I'm excited yep. and happy for you. So I was listening so. to a podcast the other day, and uh, they were interviewing Lee Lakoski, and he was talking about you know he he grew up in Minnesota, and I'd have to agree with a lot of people out there like people that come from Pennsylvania, Michigan. Minnesota, I would lump in there. Have I mean, I'm not saying other people in other states don't have an extreme passion for hunting, but if it feels like us in these states that struggle to consistently grow big bucks, you know, throughout the state, um, just have that drive because we're trying to achieve it yet. You know what I mean? And Lee Lee was talking about how now when they go out. I mean, they're, they're seeing a ton of deer every time. So his kids, as they're coming up, they go out in the woods like, oh, we saw 500 deer again. You know, we saw 500 deer, we saw 200 bucks, whatever it was. So what he's doing, he's not allowing his, his son 
to shoot a deer with a muzzleloader or a rifle until he kills a deer with a bow. Hmm. Just to get him to understand the appreciation yeah. of the resource out there. And it's not just, oh, I step in my back door and there's a deer, bang, I shoot it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's, and, and, and I, I like that strategy. Um, because, and I think that's what drove me too, was having to wait till I was 12. You know, like mm-hmm. there, I, I spent many sleepless nights. You, you couldn't know, wait. I, I couldn't wait. Right. Because it was withheld from me. You know, and I just think, I mean, this is just my own personal opinion and everybody, you know, has their own opinion and, and we have our rules out there and you go with them. But in my opinion, it's like the longer you wait, the more you're going to appreciate it in the end. And that might come from a, a maturity standpoint too, mm-hmm. but it's all situational. Oh, one, 100%. Yep. Uh, the other thing too, I was thinking about the other day was, you know, if, if they're doing, if the state does this for a recruitment um, strategy, um, I, I kind of look at it like I, 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 uh, I taught with a guy where his daughter worked for a major league baseball team and she was in charge of like, um, putting together, uh, different strategies to get people to the ballpark. So they'd have a family night or whatever. And she was trying to do all these different things. And it's like, to me, like some of these things that the state is doing and other states are doing is almost like saying, Hey, the first, uh, 5,000 fans get a free hot dog. Yeah. Is that going to fill the seats? For, free hot dogs aren't going to fill the seats. Night. Well, yeah, but still, you're not going to fill the stadium. Right. You know what fills the stadium? Big time players. Yeah. Wins. Yep. Like, yep. like making yep. your team the best. And, you know, I've heard other people talk about this too. I mean, you want to recruit hunters, have a great resource for them to to go out there and energize them to go out, you know, in yeah. the field and, and hunt, you know. So it's like, do you create all the people coming to the stadium by giving free handouts or do you bring people in the stadium by being really good at yeah. what you have right. and what you're producing? And so. I would say that kind of plays into like why Minnesota, Pennsylvania, because we have like a great outdoors. Like, yeah, like we don't maybe don't have like the best, like great big giant bucks like Iowa. Right. But we do in totality of outdoor recreation. Like a lot of those states are pretty well, you know, sought after for doing something. Right. Mm-hmm. Like whether it's walleye fishing, fishing the Great Lakes, mm-hmm. something, you know, so that might play into like a little bit of what you're talking about, like the Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Plus, we don't have those great big giant bucks. Right. So, like, we really want to get those great yeah, picture yeah, books. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Minnesota nice. Yeah, Minnesota exactly, nice. Exactly. All right, we're, we're going to get out of this rabbit hole before we go any deeper. Um, so, like I said, our topic tonight is is neighbors. And, and the hunting season is right around the corner here. And, uh, you know, we just kind of wanted to address the, the elephant in the room, if you will. When it comes to hunting, you know, neighbors are neighbors until hunting season. And uh, these guys here have developed a really good relationship with each other when it comes to hunting. Uh, how, how did you guys become hunting neighbors or property neighbors or whatever you want to call it? You want me to jump in, Brad, yeah. or you want yeah, to jump you in? Yeah, right? you had the story done pretty good. Well, um, there was a night in, oh, it was probably January 22nd, like a Tuesday night, I think, and I scored, I don't know, I had my high scoring senior, my uh, basketball night, and I scored a bunch of points on Brandon, so that's how me and Brandon got introduced. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. Um, how many points you put up? Dunked it on me. 19. Well, our, <laughs> um, um, you, were, you weren't in <laughs> Princeton when we <laughs> broke our high school scoring record at against princeton in <laughs> princeton because i wasn't there yeah because no, we weren't no. there i wasn't a great ball player <laughs> um, we're a couple years apart no so kind of kind of how it the relationship really started is um me and brandon were a great apart we went to opposing schools and in, in uh, neighboring cities so like kind of grew up like in high school like i knew a brandon um my mom taught actually in your school district so kind of like the last name was there like smaller communities or whatever um <laughs> So I, we knew of each other in high school, and then I end up going to college and meet all these other dudes from another neighboring town. Um, we're hanging out, and, you know, one of the gals was actually dating Brandon. And I was like, oh, I know Brandon, right? And right. Uh, so we can't, kind of came buddies, and I think, I don't know if it was me needed a ride home or you needed a ride home one weekend <laughs> or what. I rode home with you and that your big old green truck yeah it was, oh, i can't remember when we, well, we were linking up and we're talking and like i knew what you know what town he was from but i just didn't know where and all of a sudden i was like oh where are you at and i was like oh you know my grandpa where i've been hunting the last four years like you know he just built a house not that long ago right before went to college and 
It's like, oh, it sounds like we're right, you know, right in the same neck of the woods. Well, it turns out, <laughs> and this is after we, we've kind of been hanging out at college right. and, like, you know, like going to parties and, you know, bullshitting about hunting, going yeah. duck hunting and stuff. And it was like, turns out their neighbor, like they, their properties butt up to each butt other. Up, okay. And we're like, holy shit, this is awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I would, you know, honestly, like I would say the first couple of years, it was like, you know, this was like early on, like in our hunting careers where like we really started turning the corner on like. Just started doing. Just starting. And, I mean, just scratching and, the surface, right? Yep. Like it was still, I remember. Very like, new. How I grew up all day sits. And then Brandon would text me. Yeah. Nine 30. And they're having this great big brunch. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm freaking starving. Deer opener. Over yeah. On deer opener. Yeah, I'm up. Yeah. Rolls, just pull your right yeah, and, yeah. I, and I'm sitting there. I already ate my lunch yeah, by nine 30 and there are, they're having caramel rolls and biscuits and gravy. And, I, and put, then I, in the back of my mind, I was like, who are these freaking lightweights? They're never going to shoot a deer because they're, <laughs> they're already at breakfast. They only sat for an hour. Um, so I, that's, I mean, that's kind of the, the introduction story of like how we got going is it was just kind of like that small, tall thing. I knew somebody kind of knew Brandon from high school and it turns out we're freaking neighbors. Yeah. You guys kind of okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then slowly, you know, that relationship grew yeah. and you know, now we, we have a great, a great relationship. In fact, oh, I'm yeah. going to your wedding in Montana in a week. If that yeah. kind of goes to show people of like yeah. how good a relationship yep. it has been, you know? And I would say we transitioned to, I, I myself was more of a waterfowl hunter. Oh, early on, even and, even us, and right, right. and yeah, and we all were. We've kind of transitioned to more of where, on a waterfowl season, it's kind of like a fall time thing. It seems mm-hmm. like what it turned out to be, and now it's like we get this whole like between neighbor relations and food plots, and it's like yeah. a I can extend that feeling longer, longer. And the other thing is too, like I always kind of going back, like except for like when we're traveling to hunt out of state for waterfowl, like around where we're at, it's like. I can go shoot two wood ducks or I might be able to see a great big giant buck. Yeah. Right. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm tired of chasing wood ducks or, you know, yeah. shooting one right. mallard or something right. like we had, we've had some exceptional waterfall hunts over the years, but yeah. it just, you just kind of transition. And I think you see that with a lot of hunters actually like hardcore waterfall. Then all of a sudden like you kind of get burnt out of that up early. Yeah. For me, it was yeah, too up late. And then, you know, you just have the opportunity to extend the season. Right. A lot For me, it was two of that you know you got land or access to land you know versus sometimes you're gonna you're gonna hunt birds on a field or something like that but otherwise you got to be traveling to water to yeah. find them where you know mom and dad's or where you're at yeah. too with us being you know it's like you got you know you got access to that and mm-hmm. you know that the, you know the stuff that you can do you know that's going to be there you can go out and hunt whenever you need yeah. or whatever so we're opportunists yes like waterfall hunters now if we got birds, much. we got birds where we know we can go, <laughs> then we go. go get them. Oh, they're yeah. here. Okay. <laughs> As my grandpa's old adage, you got to shoot them while they're there. Yeah, exactly. Well, and mm-hmm. most of the times, they're not there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, when it, like I said, when it comes to hunting, you know, things can, whatever, get pretty heated uh, between neighbors. Was it love at first sight? Or was there some rocky times? I would never say there was rocky times. I think maybe, like, early on there was a few times, like, and I'll be honest, like, the first nice book I shot, like, I was like, I got him on camera, and I was like, I ain't fucking telling no one, <laughs> right? And then I think I finally was like, to Brandon one day, I was like, hey, man, like, I keep getting this deer on camera, like, just so you guys know, right? Like, and I was a little bit more secretive at that time. Now I'm like an old book. I mean, we, both, we all are to each other right. anyways, right? And so, but I don't think there was ever anything rocky. I mean, no. I feel like I maybe got, like, the deer itch a hair before you guys. So I, like, yeah. I felt like I pushed you guys more. I'm like, dude, you got a food plots here or like hunt here type of thing like i felt like i was maybe too pushy up front with like some of the like strategy or maybe like take it to the next level type of thing mm-hmm. like there's a lot of good opportunity here but i don't they're never i mean i never felt ill ill will no, towards no, you guys no, the only time all. i ever got pissed is like when i got the caramel roll pictures <laughs> you, you want to stop by for, want me to run one out to you yeah <laughs> um you guys had a really good year this past year um Cameron, why don't you kind of elaborate? I'll let you start on this past year and you can share what you want. I mean, you don't got to let everything out, but uh, just kind of let everybody, I mean, know, I mean, you guys work together and and good things happen this last year. I mean, from this last year, I mean, it's been, it was really fun. That's for sure. I mean, I obviously I'm a little more limited on time. I was, you know, I traveled from out West. I hunted three States on the way home and I got home right about at the good time. So, he hunted for a day and shot a nice buck. <laughs> See ya. No. I, I mean, I was, I was a pleasure to take, um, and 
you know, it gave me the opportunity and it got my heart going. It wasn't necessarily the buck I would say I was after, but um, when he came out, he did the exact opposite thing as where I thought it was a good deer was going to come from. And my legs started to get that twitch and gave me a shot at <laughs> yeah real close. So I'm, I wasn't going to pass him up, but you know, we've obviously had opp- other opportunities throughout our group. And that was, that was beyond exciting to hear, you yeah. know, you know, you your storybook for that particular buck kind of closes, but you're glad to see, glad to see it all play out yeah. the way it did. So do you have a, a few years of history with this deer? Um, this one, the one I had taken, it was kind of those ones where it happened so fast. You, it kind of was more of like a afterthought, you knew I knew I was going to shoot him, And then it all plays together and you're like, okay, I know that was a, you know an eight point or whatever and yeah. and it's like that this one or that one you know mm-hmm. that kind of thing kind right. of plays through your head and you know it's one of those things of i didn't we didn't have a whole lot of history but you know judging from neighbors trail cameras and stuff and yeah. i had reached out to a, a you know a couple other other guys and you know they had had a little history with them as well so it was, it was interesting to see of how much ground that deer had covered and you know how he had changed his habits from fall to summer and all those things so so I'd say, you know, I guess from my outside, that was more of a buck like midsummer. We started like paying attention to like it was one of those like not year over year history, mm-hmm. right? But it was more like all of a sudden we got a lot more pictures of them coming into the fall. It almost, yeah, yeah. And it was almost like a surprise. In a way. Yeah, yeah. You weren't expecting it with not knowing that much history, but yeah, you know, and all of a sudden he's there. It was one of those bucks that kind of left early se- mid September, right? Yeah, and then came back what November second or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like we hadn't seen him in a long time and all yeah. of a sudden he's there, you know. Yep. Did you find out where so. he went? Like how far away? Did um, anybody share any pictures like how far he ended up going away from you guys? The nearest I can figure would be just under a half miles, the probably okay. the, the one the confirmed one that I have. Sure. Other than that, and that was summer. Yeah. Oh, that was velvet a velvet picture. <clears throat> so that was way early yeah but. um josh uh i know you've told your story before uh you also shot a good buck but i mean you guys were sharing pictures back and forth is oh, it yeah. now like is it to the certain point where every single picture you get are you sharing or is it like i would say it's mostly like any it's bucks that we kind of know or like are notable right like if we sent every picture of every single one and a half year old, unless it's like something unique, right? Then normally, like we're not sending all those bucks. But if it's like one we obviously know, or one that moved in, or if it's like a good up and comer that it's like, hey, like that one, this is maybe one we should keep our hands off and and try to let them slip through the cracks this year, or hopeful that it does. Like then, then, then we talk about it. But I mean, we share a lot of photos. I mean, almost everything, pretty much everything. Yeah. Oh, anytime yeah. I get a photo, it's it's sent to them right away. What what is it that that I mean I don't share that photo of uh sometimes that, these guys the just fawn forget. the fawn mule kick in the mock scrape. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh Brandon, what do you what do you because I think the biggest thing is is like when it comes to neighbors, the 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 one thing it ends up becoming is is are you competitive or are you cooperative? And and to me it sounds like you guys are more cooperative than competitive and what keeps you guys in the cooperative mindset versus competitive um because you still gotta be competitive i mean you're going out there to try to kill this deer or a deer yeah, right. or whatever right. but what keeps you being more cooperative um i mean just being on the same page i mean you got the right mindset with the same you know we sit here and talk like this you love to you know uh sit here have a drink talk about the season upcoming that sort of thing and we're we're out there helping each other with the food plot thing and whatnot you know like okay we're gonna help get this person is there when cameron's been out working josh has been helping me as an extra hand doing some stuff at times Um, and there's reciprocity on my side too like they'll help me out if i can't get up there to to mow or to to fertilize or something they'll 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 cover my stuff doing that you know and there's <clears> anyone else out there too with like you know, a neighbor's thing it's like cost is a big issue if you don't got farm equipment or tractor you know we've done a lot of stuff with just atv you know being able to hey do you want to 
one of our upgrades was going from a backpack sprayer to, you know, we all split the cost of an ATV sprayer. Booms on it. You know, that's, that's mm-hmm. that, you know, yeah. from taking it from walking all across your food plots with a sprayer to an ATV sprayer, that's a big difference. Big time. You know, splitting some costs like that. Um, you know, and just the camar- camaraderie between us and stuff too. It's like you're all on the same team essentially, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like he gets that deer. It's like I'm just excited, you know, to be able to see that or, you know, whatever versus one of us get it. You're like you know, you're jacked. You're like, oh, God, I'm ready. You know, I want to mm-hmm. go, go see this yeah. thing. Or, you know, or someone gets an encounter with a deer or something like that. It's like you're you're all rooting for each other. You know, 100%. it's not it's not all like about me or, you know, I don't, I don't ever I don't ever feel like it's about this one guy or focused on them. It's all, you know, you're all excited to see if someone's got a story to say or, like I said, an encounter or something <laughs> like that. Or when someone gets one, it's yeah. like, you know, you're there for them. And that's. Yeah. that's that's what i think is the big thing it's never been a competition or about who gets what right? i think we all want to see each other win right mm-hmm. like right. The, the only like, the only thing i'll say i'll disagree with brandon this year is like i do really want one person to get a deer this year mm-hmm. and it's him mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> brandon's been 100%. a little bit brandon's been I've a little been bit snake, a little dry he's been snake bit been last few years spell. you know so um but yeah i, think, I know how that goes man yeah I know it's, how all right. that goes. it's all right but i've <laughs> it happens i've, yep. I've kept my head up i had good encounters this year with my own season with different stuff you know, memories that I'll never forget of how things went down or whatever, but and learning every day. Exactly. Oh, yeah. every if day. you're not out in the woods and you don't learn something every time you're there of like, okay, all right, we'll never do that again. Or, you know, you take something away from what so, you're doing. Let me let me ask you this. So you've been snake bit here for a little while. Um how come you just haven't lowered the standards and just said, Hey, you know what? Here comes a little whatever two and a half year old in. I'm gonna shoot it because I haven't shot a deer in a while. Right. I mean, that's, I had an <laughs> opportunity, I guess, with the muzzle loader at one and he had a couple broken tines on him and stuff. And, you know, it just wasn't, it didn't get the, didn't get the heart going, that sort of thing. And, um, just from like our area again, of like how we've kind of agreed on some things with those smaller, the smaller deer, you know, they're not going to get bigger, right. If you don't let them go. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, and that's, and that's, again, I'm not going to be against any neighbors against that. It gets your heart ticking. Mm-hmm. That's just fine. Yeah. You know, I think that's a great way of putting it. I mean, when people ask, what is a shooter? When the heart gets going, that's a shooter. The, the, the thing that I have a tough time with is, and, and this is where I think a lot of hunters end up, you know, button heads with other neighbors is when they end up shooting a deer because the neighbor was going to shoot it. Not because they got excited to shoot it. They were going to shoot it because the neighbor was going to shoot it. And I don't want you to get the deer. So I'm going to shoot it. And that's, that's where I think you end up developing in my mind. This is, is my own personal opinion here. Okay. People. So like in my mind, that's where all of a sudden people start getting a little frustrated. Mm -hmm. Right. Because now all of a sudden it's me versus you. It's not, let's work together here, build the best deer herd possibly in our area. It's, nope, it's everyone for themselves. And we know what happens in return when you get that type of, yeah, you know. Feuds aren't good with your there. neighbors. No, it's just, you get, you develop relationships, you develop arguments. Yep. You know, conservation officers are being called out and it's just, you it's know, they get fun. the property line dispute and all that stuff. Like it just, it, it turns into a, not a good thing. So it's like. I mean, if if you're worried about shooting deer because your neighbors are going to shoot them, in my mind, like I said, it's my own personal opinion, you're shooting deer for the wrong reason. Shoot deer because you want oh. to. Shoot deer because you enjoy the meat. Shoot deer because, you know what, this got me excited. Because in my mind, you're doing a disservice to the animal and degrading the animal by saying, hey, I'm going to shoot you because my neighbor's going to shoot you. Right. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, these animals are, are I mean, in all honesty, this is my favorite hobby to do is, is go hunting and strategize for it. And and we care about these animals. This is, this is why yeah. we're sitting here right now. Yeah, we're talking and about to it. shoot a deer because my neighbor's going to shoot it, in my mind, uh, for lack of a better term, it's BS. Yeah. <laughs> shoot the deer because you want right. to and you exactly. enjoy hunting and all that stuff. Like that's, yeah. that's my take on it. And I think we can all agree that, say, that one slips through the cracks. Every, I would say, older buck that at, adds that year of age class yeah 
They have been boogered by a hunter. They have seen cars. They have done this. Oh, yeah. Every year they are older, there's a reason they're you'll get older. one encounter every four years because it's a compounding they're effect. They're smart. Yeah. And so, and then that's, and that's kind of all we <laughs> look for. Like, you know, it, I don't want your the listeners to think, you know, we got like a great big giant piece of property that we managed together. It's really. Yeah, what do you guys got for not, acreage? Maybe three six thousand four hundred somewhere. I don't combined. know. Combined, it's combined, combined. Between. Yeah, it and it, it's not all one. It's not all consecutive, yeah. right? But I mean, they're close enough to where I mean, some of it, a lot of, most of it is conjoined, mm-hmm. right? But I hunt a permission property that's conjoined to all of them, and you know, as do we. Yep, and yep. and same to you. And so you know, but we I call it like we pseudo manage, like we do what we can do, mm-hmm. but it's not like we got a thousand acres and we have hard set rules like nothing under one forty or four point rule or. 130 right like if our spouses go out and they shoot a one-year-old and they're happy we're freaking excited we're all drinking beers it's a dragon party right and that kind of goes back to like our relationship it's like now when any of us shoot a deer like they're like kind of like brothers in a way it's like they're one of the first people after my dad my grandpa my wife it's pretty much these guys that are going to get a call then you know not to if any of my other buddies or something that are like some of the best friends it's not that but it's like we've done so much work together for these individual deer and like strategize that it's like in the same thing when they call me i expect like i'm gonna be over there as yeah. fast as i can to help drag take pictures and, and celebrate and, and celebrate the victory right we all won and it right? doesn't even matter if it's a you don't even have to kill one it's like oh i saw him i saw yeah. Him. oh yeah the, i mean as soon phone, as it's that phone call after it's the like, oh boy i'm probably the worst because like brandon like oh i saw a good one tonight <laughs> and, and like as soon as i know he's it's about 30 minutes after you know sundown and i know he's walked back i'm like who was it like wh- like where did he come from like yeah, we're yeah. and it's 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 you know the, the same thing both ways we're always trying to pick up on each other information and we strategize that way i, I think it's just the excitement too of hunting right like n- maybe it's not gonna work out where all of a sudden you know okay you're learning about this deer but it's about deer in the future you're you're, you're learning about deer behavior you know right oh yeah like what did he do which way did he yeah. come from did he use the wind was the back you know wind at his back you know what was it but yeah, it's it's oh, it's and, and a there's a little lot of tool his, you can add every time. Hundred percent, there's historical data like that we're all catching up on, and now it's like, oh, like you got a picture here, there, and you start linking up times together, right? And it's like you you're building that that and that story, that story, and mm-hmm. not the story, but you're also building that history and those travel patterns and everything. And so like it, it's only helping all of us, right? And some you know, of those times you're like, holy, holy moly, he's moved that far, and all of a sudden, yeah. Wow. Well, there's been a lot of like we, we've named bucks wow. in the past like romer and stuff like that mm-hmm. because it's like they're way out on the farthest south piece of theirs and way on my north piece and it's like you would have never thought you and throw you've a ne- dart and you, and you, you, you've never seen them on anymore. the hoof or whatever, you've never seen you know, them on the hoof like... but they're all over your property you know i don't know if you guys listen to dr bronson strickland at all i, uh, I have quite yeah a bit. you guys listen to him at all uh he works for uh is it mississippi state yep. yeah and and uh a lot of deer research and they've collared so many deer and i was actually listening to a couple of their podcasts today just because i like science-based research and on you're on the deer. mower all day I, I, yeah well that too <laughs> yeah but like i mean just like myself I'm, I'm sitting here and and we're talking about stuff that we've seen right yeah these are people that have actually studied deer and have oh, tried deer. Yeah. So, like, I'm going to listen to these guys before any podcasters oh, or right, whatever. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, everybody thinks, like, oh, you know, his his core area is right here. And this is where he is. And this is his, his bedroom and mm-hmm. whatnot. They say, what is it? Like, a sedentary buck, like, a home range buck will cover, like, it's like 1,200 acres. Yeah, a mile. It's about like a mile yeah. radius, yeah. right? Yeah, and it's like it's like so so for a person to think like a buck is just going to stay here on this forty yeah. and that's it. I mean, yeah, you're, you're kidding yourself. Guys, they're all on that guy's property. Yeah, right? no, yeah it's, right. And it's not that way. We see it all the time. I mean, maybe there's only forty acres of woods and twelve square miles. Maybe there might be one that stays close, but I mean, right. still, yeah, right. they're, they're roaming. And I think like they in a twenty four hour period, um, they're covering like four hundred yards. Yep. Like that's, I mean, that's, that's like a, a 24 hour period. They're covering 400 yards. So, they, so I was just listening. Like, okay. So, I mean, just cause there's nothing on your trail camera, you know, you never know Four, you might be oh. 400 yards away. Something might come through. Right. But on the other hand, you know, you get these people that get really intense about keeping a deer on their property. Good luck. Yeah. You know I mean, what I mean? Yeah. You, you, mm-hmm. you can increase 
I think you're stacking the odds. Yeah, you're using the odds. You know, you're stacking them in your favor by having food plots out there and scrapes yeah. out there and all that stuff. Yes, but, but you got to remember, like, like myself, I got a forty. You know what yeah. I mean on this piece. You know, I got a sixty up there. It's like I'm just doing whatever I can do to try to get those deer yeah. to utilize mine every now and then. Yep. You know, it's not going to stay here forever, but, um, but yeah, like you're talking about the the bucks that you guys were going after. All of a sudden, they were here, then they were gone. Yeah. Uh, they were talking about excursions. You know, this buck Boy, swam a, a mile across the river. It was a mile across yeah. this river. It swam across it. Mississippi. Yeah, across the Mississippi. And then all of a sudden, uh, came back. And then the following year, about the same time, he swam it's across the, the Mississippi yeah. Yeah. over to Louisiana. And, like, right. it's like these deer are going to do what they were, whatever, born to do. Or yep. they're or when they were born in one spot, they're going to go back to that spot and check it out. So it's like... You know, people get so wound up and so, you know, like this buck, you know, this is my buck or whatever. Right. It's like, man, just, it's, yeah, <laughs> you got to work like, with each other. You got to work game. with each other. It is. But but working with each other, I'm like, we've been established patterns on oh. deer or certain types of deer that we're trying to go after. And, you know, without the intel from Josh, I mean. And vice versa. And vice versa. It's like, we've, I mean, I greatly value that intel because. You know, it's been able, I would say it's benefited us in a tenfold of oh, how much we've understand of, you know, could be weather patterns or, you know, yep. or other camera you know, placements. Trying well, to how many times have we the moved the camera and then it's like, oh, that's all that SOB is getting you know, from here like, to there. Yeah, well, we and we've been trying to figure it out and you move it a couple hundred yards. We've had on. it happen where it's literally been that day, that night. It's like, now we know there's there's another puzzle piece, yeah. you know, yep. that you have X and it. Z and mm -hmm. just plug in Y and then you found where he's moving. It's yep. like, but you're moving Y, you know, all over the place to try to figure it out. Right. And one other thing to kind of piggyback off that is, is like, not only we have a very strong relationship and it's different because our properties are butt up next to each mm -hmm. other, but we also have good relationships with a couple other, another crew of good buddies that we're good buddies with. Mm -hmm. They don't hunt like right, right next to us. But like basically across the road mm -hmm. are their properties, and like how many times it's like, oh, that buck always disappeared in, you know, October fifteenth, and he comes back in the end of November, and now we're good buddies with them, and it's like, them guys are getting it on camera, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. a mile away, and it's living there all year. So it's like, mm -hmm. we, we, not only do we have good relationships, but we try to have good relationships with any other hunters in the air for the most part. Yeah, you know, right. like there's some you know rifle hunters that they just come in rifle hunt during the season. We don't have much communication, but I would say for the most part most of the bow hunters in the area that are, you know, pretty ad adamant that, you know, and are diligent and that are out there quite a bit. Like we try to stop and talk to most of them that, that we see and, mm -hmm. you know, just build a small relationship. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have to give them all the information or do that, but it's like, Hey, what do you granted those other crew? Like we, we are good buddies. So like right. that one's like, yep, we got a picture of these bucks and you know, vice versa. A lot of times there's not a lot of crisscrossing bucks, but there's a few times yeah. where it's and like, they some. have a good chance to kill them. One of the bucks that we're hunting is mm -hmm. as we do, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you never know what to what to right. Do. And when they shed that velvet, it's like all of a sudden they disappear, oh, yeah. or oh, yeah. vice versa. Happen. It's like you're been here all summer. You're yeah. moving stuff around, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, he's over there. Well, he ain't. Yeah, probably ain't come back unless a doe brings him over yep. or something. But it's like, go get him. Yeah, there are weird times though, like where we have seen like a few bucks where it's like, I get a shit ton of pictures of them, two hundred yards from their property line. Mm -hmm. They never get a picture of them, and vice versa. Like that buck you killed, I never got a picture of him. And it wasn't that far away yeah, where you killed him, no. but you got you had tons of pictures of him. Yep. So it does seem like, to some degree, and for some bucks, there's not a lot of overlap, and even like though they're in, close. But it could just be that that's the outside of their range, and it doesn't hit mine. You know, what uh, what one thing have you seen maybe on both your properties that has played out to be? Um, successful for both of you i don't know maybe, maybe there is maybe there isn't maybe there's something that you guys have learned over the years that hey this really works like you mean between us like communicating uh or? no i'm talking about just a hunting strategy like like you, you know each other's properties mm -hmm. like is there something that your property has that yours has or maybe there's something that yours has that yours doesn't where all of a sudden it's like you know what man whatever josh has i wish i had that because it seems like these bucks really go there or, i mean is there any is there anything that you notice on each other's properties that like man that's really beneficial to have i, I would say that both in my opinion both the property 
so I hunt and then their property is like they're kind of similar okay. in terms of egg versus timber versus brick bottom. Sure. Right. It's very similar in like right. any of the deer that basically any of the deer that I've killed in the last few years, like I felt like they had just as good a shot or better than nope. me. I it's mean, just, it's kind of right place, right yeah. time. Just a, exactly. I think it's kind of feeling out pictures or intel, you know, yeah. as far as sharing things in, you just, yeah. it's all part of its learning luck, curve. I mean, a lot of times spot. I'm jealous because they get to do a lot more property management stuff than I do just because. I have a more strict grandfather and yeah. he doesn't maybe like to do a lot of the stuff that I would like to do, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. And, and one of the properties I have is a permission. So it's, it's just like, I'm, I just don't get the opportunity to do as much stuff. So, you know, if anything, I feel like I'm like, always like looking across like grass is greener type of thing, Yeah, you know, but I'm sure that you guys are doing the same thing on my side. Like there, there's give and take both ways and both properties are, they're similar, but there's differences. I'm sure it's all kind of like, to me, it's kind of on that learning curve, you know, us as hunters, you know, you start out and you, we see it. I mean, there's neighbors and people that we've gotten to know, like me and Josh always approach our brand too. We always approach, you know, other bow hunters that are on these permission farms that we've been on before is like, you know, they're on just a different part of the learning curve. So you, you try to, you're not pressing your ideas on there, but you're telling them like, you know, this is what I'm, yeah. what I'm doing or here's where I'm going. And as they learn, they kind of figure that out. It's the same thing as on our yeah. own properties. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've, you know, you've tech how many years ago i wasn't looking at bedding areas yeah what is that right you know i think if anything it's just like our like how we've progressed in strategy yeah is the biggest yeah. thing is like you know being smarter about where we're going yep. being a lot smarter about the wind learning, you know learning from a mistake exactly like, oh, i'm not gonna do that or approach this and way then again. using any like recent intel to make you know more educated decisions right and now it's a that's like bounced off of what we share as intel of you know from whether it's be trail camera pictures of mm-hmm. how that deer was using it on this day yep. versus, you know, oh, I bumped him and he was in the area that I didn't think he was going to exactly. be in mm-hmm. or anything, you know, it could be, you know, oh, I need to go around all that. Cause there's a heck of a lot of does in there. Oh, I can't right. do that again yep. because I have no idea what I bumped, yep. you know, elsewhere. And, and there's a lot of communication too. Like, right. Like we piggyback each other off runs. Like pretty much anytime I go out, like, Hey guys, like this is where I'm going. Right. And so that gives them the opportunity to be like, Hey, they can get like to my downwind side just in case that buck's in that bedding area and I don't think he's in there, but he might be. They can hunt that downwind side because maybe I bump him that way and vice versa. Like you, we play off each other, mm-hmm. right? Or we know of like one core bedding area that splits the properties. It's yep. like we kind of like we can kind of surround it in a sense. Like I don't know that we've ever shot anything doing that, but it's like right. we, we play to each other's plays yep. too, you know. So that's that's a tough part for me, like you know, on, on multiple properties that I hunt. You got, you got neighbors that, you know, toe the line with their stands and they're right on the edge. It's like, well, do I even go out there right now? Because if yep. they're sitting right on that line, they're going to blow everything before it even gets to me. So should I even go out? So it's nice you guys are communicating, um, you know, along those lines. And, and like you said, if, if, if you're working together and you understand where the bedding areas are and, you know, because just because a deer is bedded on yours, Josh, doesn't mean that it can't wander over on their property a lot of times they do bad and they go south <laughs> right you, you know what i mean so it's like i mean hey, it's... we're sitting across the river and they're all going north yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's weird how it works right. it's weird how it works talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it is good like because you know there's times like they'll tell me what stand they're hunting and like okay i'm mm-hmm. not going to go in that area it's like we're too close you know i don't yeah, want right, to i don't right. i don't want to goof them up and i know they're already in or you know and vice versa you know it's like oh josh is down there but we'll go on another spot you know so obviously i mean not everyone is going to end up developing a relationship like guys and i'll let you guys kind of go first like what would you recommend to people out there and brandon start with you what would you recommend to people out there maybe if they don't have have a working relationship try to start building a working relationship with their neighbors to try to get things moving in the right direction um and maybe try to i don't know bury the hatchet of previous issues let their little brother do it. Yeah, send them over. Yeah, send send them over. Send them in. Um, I don't know if you if you're out and about. You say you see them on the road. You, I, you know, we always got neighbors come up the road on side by sides. You know, you give them a wave or you see them out, whatever. Run into them in town. You know, just just chat it up with them. Um, we've done that before as well. You know, just saying, you know, like we have just kind of give them our spiel of, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to ever come off as pressing of like, Oh, you got to shoot this bigger deer 
or whatever it is, you know, uh, to let the little ones grow again, it's your heart pumping. I'm all for it, you know, but I've just come across nicely with it and you just kind of tiptoe as far as the, if, you know, how they kind of take you, maybe ask them a few questions of, you know, or, you know, what are you looking for? Are you looking for maybe meat for the freezer or something like that? Or, you know, looking to get a dough down or, you know, if they say something about a, a decent buck or something like that, that's how I kind of guide my, with how, with what I might ask them about some stuff. And, you know, and if, if it feels like they might not have the same, maybe like particular views of like some management things and that's fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm always going to be respectful of, you know, I always try to address like, okay, I might see their truck on this permission property that I might be on and be like, okay, you know, okay. Or if I'm going out there, I'll text them. Where are you, where are you going to sit tonight? I just want to not be affecting them with my wind yeah. or, yeah. you know, be creeping into where they, they might be expecting a deer to come from. And, um, I always been respectful of that as well as they've kind of showed it vice versa to me too, just like Josh was saying between us, but other places with neighbors as, um, uh yeah just seeing how they kind of play off of it with that and just being respectful of as i always like to be not pressing of anything yep. and you get a feel for what they say and kind of take it from there of what their thoughts might be on some stuff so thank you i'm kind of a you don't feel it out necessarily you do but also in that sense is you like you never know an opportunity until you actually get it um but like say say you got a neighbor that you don't want to show a big buck picture to. Mm -hmm. Well, put it this way: say he didn't know he was out there. You know that big buck is going to be hard to kill no matter what. Doesn't yeah. matter. I don't mm -hmm. care if you got a rifle, muzzle loader, mm -hmm. archery. He's going to be hard to kill. I think we can all agree on that. Is say I don't own that picture, and he sells for he shoots that year and a half year old or whatever, fill the freezer or mm -hmm. whatever. Say I show him that three and a half, four and a half whatever it is and he's like oh i'm gonna hold out well that deer's got better odds of slipping through the cracks than the anybody else right right point. so do you show him that picture and hopefully he holds out because he wants to kill the big boy kill the big boy have the big boy story and yep. everything mm -hmm. great but that's also going to prove a potential of you know he slips through the cracks the he's a year bigger right yeah. but then it's also he didn't kill those year and a half two and a half three and a half all those just got a year older you know a lot of people i feel like tread that line of i don't want to show them this big buck picture mm -hmm. but i mean look at look at i would say the big deer we've killed one sighting two sightings if that in there four tons five of, years. tons of photos tons right. of photos right. but have you ever seen them on a hoof right. there's very, a reason very, you yeah. haven't right. that's very point. and i so, lean that way too I, th I would say it's very tough we're more open me and you are yeah. much more open and like when i see another bull i'd rather communicate up front and lay it all out there and, you know maybe i'm not always like coming off i'm not gonna be the first not it's not the first picture i'm gonna show mm -hmm, them right mm -hmm. it's gonna be the biggest one that i got a picture of but mm -hmm. i'll try to be as open as i can because i want them to trust me yeah right and i want to be able to trust what they're saying yep. too right like and that's part of the relationship right a good relationship but there's mm -hmm. trust both ways it's mutual mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and so you know I, I my opinion is i'd rather have them hold out and the young ones go if that's what they please yep. right like if they shoot the young one great i'm happy for them but at the same time, like, it's just one more that's going to keep going. Yep. And, like, yep. in a couple of years, you say he'd shoot the big one the year you show him the big one, he ain't going to shoot one every year. Yeah. Yep. Right? And so it just kind of comes into fruition. That's that it, cumulative effect. Exactly. Of, you know. Right. And that's kind of what we've been going for. Yeah. Right? You know? It's like, like I said, our spouses, my grandpa, like, a lot of people have shot some pretty nice bucks the last, you know, five, six years. I mean, you know. We're not shooting like mega giants, like, you know, yeah. booners and stuff, but we're shooting really nice deer, deer yeah. really solid deer. And, you know, like every, every time one slip, slips through, it's like, it, yep. it goes back to that compounding thing. Like they just got a little bit smarter. They just got a little bit older. They just got a little bit harder to kill. And like, right. that's what we want running around. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough because, you know, say you got a, a small parcel and, and uh, I, I just remember one time I was, I was out hunting and I was talking to the neighbor and told him i passed up a a good buck really good buck and uh next day there was three vehicles parked. right you know the the right. they were out there hunting where the previous day there was nothing yeah. out there so it's 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 tough um oh it is and like know, to, right. i think if anything like i'm like this past year with the cro admin to the crossbow opening mm -hmm. like i felt like the first 
month of bow season, there was more vehicles in our couple section area than ever before. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it was like, what is going on here? You know, but like that goes to like, you know, we want to be as open as we can, but at the same time, like we don't want the whole, everybody yep. in the universe to know exactly what's going on. Right. Right. We're doing a podcast, but you know, it's, if, if you share everything, with everybody super willy nilly, it, then it's going to bite you. It will. It so, will. I think uh, I think this right here, what we're doing right now, is how you build a relationship with your neighbors. Oh yeah. When okay. you can sit down and have a few beverages and just talk, and like you said, you're you're we're, you guys aren't here pointing fingers saying you need to do this and you need to do that because I'm doing that. You got to build a a personal relationship Mm -hmm. before you start trying to build a a hunting relationship. Because if you jump in, it's just my thoughts. If you just jump in and start saying, well, this is this and this is that. And this is what you you have to do. You're done. Yep. It's not going to work. Yeah. It's it's not going to work. I mean, look at, look at when you were younger, right? When your mom and dad said, you need to do this. What was the first thing you want to do? The opposite. You know, you didn't want to do it. Because right. why? Because they told you to. Maybe you yeah. guys did. I mean, maybe I'm <laughs> yeah, different. But no. when you're told to do something, you don't really feel like doing it. But if all of a sudden the decision is yours yeah. and you work <clears throat> together to come to a conclusion, then it then it's more satisfying. One hundred percent. But when when people come in guns a blazing, saying, "Well, this is what we need to do, and this is this, and you know, period," like that's that's where you, you burn those bridges immediately, and good luck trying to repair those. Right. I mean, that's, that's just my thought. So if you want to build a relationship, don't even talk hunting right away. Like, like just come over and have a beer with me yep. and, and just Good shoot the bull. Yep. Right. right. Because I don't know, I, I've seen it before where all of a sudden guns come in a blazing from like, I'll, I'll see other people with their neighbors and, and my neighbors and, you know, I've seen it tons yep. where. People come in and try to impose their will on them, and all of a sudden, mm-hmm. yep, they're they're not getting it, and all hell breaks loose, you know. And all of a sudden, we're not I'm not sharing pictures with them. How did you guys meet? It was in college. You you having had beers. a relationship, yeah. having beers, bullshitting, and then all of a sudden, guess what? Now let's talk hunting. Oh, sweet, sounds yeah. good. Let's do this. All right, sounds like a plan. Yep, you know, and uh, that's that's my advice out there. Don't even bring up hunting right away. Build a working relationship yeah. first, just right. as a neighbor relationship. Yeah, build that first, and then ease your way into hunting and just be passive about it. And you know, don't have rules. You guys kind of mentioned that you don't have rules. I mean, you kind of have standards in in your mind what you would like to shoot. But once you start saying no, nobody is shooting a two year old. Well, I've run into this before too. Well, what's a two year old? Oh, yeah. One yeah. guy's going to claim a two-year-old, uh, <laughs> no matter what, if it's got eight points, it's a two-year-old. Right. You know, uh, a one-year-old is is only a buck with spikes. Yeah. You know, it can't have eight points if it's yeah. a one-year-old. You know, so um, just we talk about, too, your heart gets going. Yep. That's a shooter. If yeah. that's what you like shooting because your heart's going, shoot it. Go for it. Um, but let's let's go on the flip side here. And then we, we kind of hit it on it a little bit, and I, I kind of talked about it, too how to, how to ru- ruin that re- working relationship and you know it's in my mind you come in you set rules and tell people what you're doing and expect the same out of them obviously it's it's not going to work but any other thoughts on that like try to keep people from you know stirring the pot uh you know with their neighbors i mean like obviously it's it's all about the relationship that, that's what i view it as is, <clears throat> how about stand placement well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say. Like, that was going to be my example, right? Like, if I if I set up a stand right on the property line and was like, you know, it seemed like I was shooting across and they're like, well, well like, I mean, as much as it seems like we're conjoined, like, we do, we're good about like, hey, like, this is your land, this is my land, mm-hmm. you know? And like, that's, and we're good about it, right? And that's what makes our relationship really good is like, we know where the boundaries are, we don't push it, mm-hmm. and that's part of it. But granted, you know, all of a sudden, I'm sneaking across five, ten yards. Like, if I wasn't who I am, I, I would expect them to get mad at me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And vice versa. It's it's that that's how you can ruin it. But you I mean, know? sometimes right. it's like, like for me, if I snuck across your property line, like five or ten yards, I would get a gut wrenching gut ache. Oh, one hundred percent. I'd be yeah. like, it, you know, you're human. This oh, one hundred percent. There's times where I've gone and it's like, oh, 
I feel like I'm too close and I'm 100 yards away. And I'm yep. like, geez, you know, like I'm feeling guilty, <laughs> yeah. you know, all that type of thing, yep. you know, less than 100. But, you know, but like, I guess we don't have the personalities, but we don't like worry about it for us. But, yep. you know, like I have hunted other properties, permission properties where, you know, kill a nice buck. Then all of a sudden there's a stand there the next year. This was somebody else that has permission. It's like, oh, yeah. What the heck? All like, of them go to that spot, right? It's like yeah, it's like yeah, well, yeah. you you knew it has to be lead to Rome. even though that yeah. even though that you know so gone. so it's like that's that's a good way to to ruin it is to you know cross the boundaries you know you know figuratively and you know physically yeah. crossing the boundaries and believe it or not there was like an instance where we were uh, one of the permission properties that we're on that also butts up to uh, Josh's and ours is like you know we try to lay that line even on our, Oh yeah. You know, on a prison mission property, I'm not going to come on a permission property and be, you know, over the line or pushing the boundary on Josh is close to it. But now, like, now granted, I will say this, like I'm, in my side, if they ever shot across line and they shot a great big buck, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Well, like I would never, what I would you, never be mad. What but that, doing? No, but like just because we have such a good relationship, yeah, right. you know, as much as I just said, like, you know, we're, we're good about things because we are good about it. But if there was ever an instance where like, how many times have I told you like, Hey, like go up and kill that Turkey on the pipeline. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah. if you hear one up there, freaking go yeah. after it. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, it's like, like again, we, we all want to see each other successful. So like our relationship's a little bit different, but like, you know, I should, I should have phrased what I said earlier. It's like how to ruin it. That's a good way to ru- ruin it for a lot of people. For us, that there's probably a little more gray as much as we are good about the lines and yep. everything. Like if, if they had an opportunity at the biggest, like a turd inch, which we have never had, but if they, if there was one and it was five yards across the fence, I'm like, I'm thinking like, please shoot that like because no. like no. that no one might get it right or it might run five miles away and somebody else shoots it and we're all sitting there going well, damn it that's the yeah. buck that yeah. we felt like you know no. as much as you don't want to feel ownership over deer right right you every it. if, if, that's if just, you don't feel yeah. it if like the, the buck i shot this year like i knew these guys i i, I didn't think that that buck was in my wheelhouse mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and as soon as i felt i shot it is i'm pumped about it don't get yeah. me wrong yeah. right but at the same time i was like Oh, no. Those guys might be mad. I'm like, you know, like, like I know, I know how much like that, that they put in for that deer, yep. right? And I just happened to catch it the day it took an excursion and it was on a stroll. Oh, I mean, I was in the stand that day. So was and I. That was the buck I was, thought I was going to see on. Right, and I that was not <laughs> the like, one I thought I was going to yep. see. Did my heart sink? Of course, a little bit, right? Don't lie, a little bit. <laughs> I would say a little Damn bit. Damn you, Josh! Damn it! <laughs> but I mean, I'm still so pumped. Oh that's, yeah, it's like. When can I come over? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll see. Well, it's like when, when we're going, it, like when Bill Winky talked about, like when that story's done and that that deer is no longer in the woods. You're just like part part of you. Bittersweet those pictures. Yeah, it's bittersweet. That's counter, a great way to put it. That's that's what it is yep. more so. Like the, oh, 100%. okay. Well, that's that. I'm mad. It's yeah. That that chapter is closed. Yeah. You know, but then it's like, all right, we're going, we're going to Who's have a next? beer at the yep. beer in the shed. Yep. You know, we're yep. we're getting putting a buck up. We're getting, black, we're getting some blackberry. It's, yes. <laughs> like I felt that was but big that's, time. But that's you know, yeah. this is all because of the relationship you guys built exactly. before you started 100%. hunting, and even knowing you were hunting next to each <clears throat> other. Yep. And I think that's what we got to take from this podcast is that when it comes to having neighbors out there who are hunting. Build a friendly relationship before you even move into hunting. And yep. things like this can happen. Yeah. Like neighbors can work together. And now look at, yes, you guys shot some nice bucks this year. But being that you're working together, you're just building that next crop. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and it's sure. just going to keep refueling itself year after year because of the working relationship you have. If you didn't have this, well, guess what? Be a little longer before another one comes around, right, you know, the exactly. size of the deer that you guys shot. So and props to you guys for doing that. Yeah. I, I'd like to put out there too of like people that, you know, you might have that relationship with your neighbor that says, well, I, they won't care if I go track a deer over there. Uh, call them anyway. Yes. Yeah. Like, it goes a long anyway. ways. Yep. It goes a long ways. Yep. yep. I it's mean, and piece. then, you know, it's just a subtlety is like, you don't feel, like in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, they're not going to, they'd rather have you recover that, go and recover that deer. But it'd be like, Hey, maybe you want to come on track with me. You know, yeah. maybe they know where that bedding area is. is he's going to circle around and be like, ah, you know, or he, he's making this run. Let's leave him overnight. Yeah. You know, that neighbor might know that, that you don't, that it's going back to what I, what I, what I said before was 
when you let it be the other person's decision, things work out well. Oh, yeah. When you want it to be your decision and you just do what you want to do, now we got issues. So, yeah, call. And and one piece of advice uh, a former conservation officer told me was don't wait until you kill the deer. Contact those people beforehand where that deer could possibly run before season and just yeah. let them know beforehand. I did that this year already um, or last year, and I'll do it again this year. Um, I just reached out uh, to the neighbors and just said, hey, you know, if a deer ends up wandering over on your property, is that okay if I could, uh, you know, track it? And every one of them was fine with it. But guess what? Every one of them wouldn't be fine with it if I didn't ask them exactly. and just walked over. Exactly. Why? Because a lot of they didn't say it could. A, oh, and we're so glad you asked. You know, yeah. we, we appreciate that. You know, and I'd like to say, you know, one minor thing too, it's like, again, going back, we're not managing a great big property. Mm-hmm. We're not, you know, like we're not killing great, like super giants all the time. We've killed some really nice deer, but yep. you know, I think one thing I see a lot with other hunters and, and I'm starting to get over the hump and I'm sure, I think you guys are getting there too, where it's like, originally it's like, there's only one big deer out there yeah. and that's in the back of my, yeah. and if somebody else shoots it, it's like, that was my one chance for how that might be my only chance the rest of my life. Well, now that we've been doing some of these small things, you know, pseudo managing, doing habitat improvements where we can, doing more food plots, doing more strategy, passing on some of the smaller deer so they can get through the cracks. Well, now it's like when somebody shoots a big one, in my mind, I'm to the point where like, there's going to be another one. Yep. Yep. You no, know, or it's like, you, and, you, and so you... that, that anxiety and stress of the hunting season, it goes down as much as you do get attached to certain yep. deer. Yep. At least now when one hits the ground, it's like, well, there's going to be another. I know there's going to be another. Yeah, you got to be optimistic. And And if there's not another one, I'm going somewhere else where there is. Yep. (laughs) I mean, and some of that's just personal mentality. But, you know, we've been pretty lucky that when, you know, we've shot some nice deer and there's always another crop of good deer that we get excited for. Fill in the void. Well, I'll tell you what. Every time. uh, You guys obviously got a great working relationship. And uh, this is a perfect example of good things happen to good people and you guys are being you know good to each other and, and obviously it paid off for both sides this year and hopefully uh many more to come hopefully for brando yeah there we yeah. go um all right well we're gonna wrap it up guys i appreciate you guys coming over and joining yeah, me uh you. it was Absolutely. a lot of fun and i thought there's a lot of great information there yeah. thank everybody listening uh to another episode of the minnesota rack stars podcast and i uh, hope you guys have a great day